Hey, I'm here to help make choosing your next trout rod simple today. There are so many rods on the market, so many options, from a hundred bucks to a thousand bucks. I'm gonna make it super simple in choosing your next trout rod. We're gonna talk about rod weight, application, rod length, action, and of course, cost. And I'm gonna help you make a great decision. There are also links in the video description down there. We encourage you, contact Reds if you need help or shop at Reds. We have real people, friendly pros, answering the phones, chat, email. Hit us up and we're happy to help. So without further ado, we're gonna get started and we're gonna talk about fly rods in order of light to heavy. So here we go. Okay, so what is rod weight? Because that is really the first question that we need to solve. Depending on where you're fishing, you might want a rod weight that is very light or you might want a rod weight that is very heavy. What is weight? Is it how big a fish can you catch? Is it how far you can cast? What does it mean? It's essentially an arbitrary number for all intents and purposes. A five being very average, a zero being very small. So I'm gonna show you these two right here. A zero weight rod is great for small streams. A five weight rod is great for more all around fishing. And you could just see the difference in the size of the graphite blank right there. But rod weight is important and that's gonna that's going to direct our discussion as we work through light rods to heavy rods. So where you're going fishing is the number one question that we always have to start with when choosing a fly rod. Depending on where you're going, you might need a different tool for the job. I'm going to start by talking about the ultra light rods and that's a zero to two weight series of rods. This is a zero weight right here. It's very small, seven and a half feet long, great for small streams with brushy canopies and short, accurate casts, where I need to make a very short cast on a small piece of water, but it needs to land with precision accuracy, maybe right next to a stick, under a branch, or right behind a small boulder. The size of fish I'm gonna be after with a zero to two weight rod are gonna be much smaller in that environment. So I'm gonna target trout that might be anywhere from say six inches, maybe up to, to 12 to 14 inches on the very large end, but a zero to two weight rod is gonna allow me to be very quick and very accurate in those small, small streams. I could also react and set the hook and be proactive in hooking the fish very quick without the power. Very important to know for those light rods. In a, an analogy that I like to make in, in talking about small fly rods, it's, it's a little bit like a game of ping pong to me. It's a small court, it's very fast, and when you're playing ping pong, a good fast volley is, is critical to success. Fishing on small streams is the same way. You could probably play ping pong with a tennis racket, but it wouldn't be very graceful. So on small streams, with a short rod, I can make very short, quick casts. I can make a couple of quick false casts and land my small dry fly very accurately. With these light rods, I'm probably not gonna employ the use of a nymph, but very rarely. All right, so the next category of rods are also gonna be for small streams. Now, these small streams are gonna get just a little bit bigger, and also the trout are as well. And that's gonna be three weight and four weight rods in that seven to eight foot range. Those are great rods for handling trout that are a little bit larger maybe in that 12 to 16 inch range, but I still need to make very short, accurate casts on a smaller stream or creek. Now, a rod that's only seven to eight feet long isn't gonna be the best rod for laying out longer casts on a big river like this, but those are an excellent choice for small to mid-sized streams, primarily with dry flies, occasionally maybe with a small nymph as well. Now the next segment of rods are gonna be for the angler that is gonna be fishing on slightly larger streams, even streams as large as this river right here. And these are gonna be three and four weight rods that stretch out to that eight and a half to nine foot range. And I like to call these hatch rods. They're really purpose built for delivering dry flies very accurately at slightly longer range. They give you a little bit more reach for managing line across current and they have a, a, a they're more capable of roll casting 
a great distance when you need to in those situations. So three and four weight rods, eight and a half to four feet, deliver a dry fly extremely well. We love to use those rods specifically for targeting feeding fish on larger rivers like this or on mid-sized streams when dry flies are on the menu most of the time. Those rods are gonna be capable of carrying a dry fly with a dropper nymph underneath it or a very light indicator rig. A nine foot four weight in a fast action is also very capable of using small to medium sized indicators and beadhead nymphs as well. Okay, the next category is easy. These are five weights. This is the middle of the road right here. Five weight rods are the best selling and most common rod for most anglers facing western fishing situations like this. The five weight is capable of throwing small dry flies very accurately, but it also can be a workhorse and throw bait fish patterns, strike indicators, or weighted nymphs, and it can do pretty much everything we ask it to do. I like to think of it as like a half ton pickup. You could fill it full of rocks or firewood if you need to, but it's still not bad driving down the interstate. The, five, the nine foot five weight is the most common and best selling out of all rods. It's capable of reaching out and getting distance for you in a situation like maybe lake fishing, for instance, or on a big river like this. It's not the best tool for the job when it comes to small brushed in streams. It's kind of like playing ping pong with a tennis racket. It's very awkward on small water. But if you're looking for your first trout rod and the river behind me looks a little bit like where you're gonna be fishing, a nine foot five weight is a great way to go. An eight and a half foot five weight is very good for mid-sized streams where you might be targeting some larger trout as I'll talk about when I discuss rod length, shorter rods are slightly more accurate. So an eight and a half foot five weight is certainly easy to cast, very accurate, great for a dry fly or dry dropper specific rod on mid-sized streams. Okay, last are gonna be the heavyweights when it comes to trout fishing. The heavyweights are gonna be maybe a five weight that's nine and a half or 10 feet long, six weights and seven weights. Eight weights are rarely used for trout. Anything heavier than that, we're not gonna talk about today because we're gonna keep the conversation focused on trout. A six weight rod is great if you plan to throw sinking lines, bait fish patterns like sculpin, streamers or leeches, or large strike indicator setups on a river. The six weight's great for windy scenarios and when casting situations are gonna be 40 feet and beyond. Six weight rods absolutely have a place in the boat or your quiver. They are going to sacrifice a bit on touch control and accuracy at closer range. The six weight rod is generally purpose built for people throwing weighted flies. Okay, so how long of a rod do you need? Now here are the basic pros and cons. In my right hand, I've got a nine foot rod, which is kind of standard for Western style fly fishing in open environments like you see here. In my left, I've got a seven and a half foot rod. Shorter rods provide a lot more accuracy and just general touch and control and fishiness at close range. Shorter rods are much more accurate under 30 feet. Longer rods provide you more reach to reach out and manipulate line. They can do things like roll cast longer when you have an impeded back cast, and they also tend to throw weighted flies much more effectively. So somewhere between seven and a half and nine feet are where most trout rods are gonna fall. As rods get beyond nine and a half feet, they're great for nymphing or maybe picking up a sink tip when you're wading deep, but longer rods become a little bit more awkward and a little bit harder to handle and are definitely less accurate with dry flies. So when it comes to rod length, choose wisely. Small brushed in streams, you're looking at seven to seven to eight feet. Bigger, more open water, we're looking at eight feet and beyond. So you'll hear a lot about rod action. Fast, medium fast, medium, slow, moderate. What that's describing is that rod's desire to be straight and how fast it's gonna recover. And that's gonna affect how it casts. Fast action rods are great for weighted flies and open windy conditions. They recover very quickly and allow the angler to throw a very aerodynamic cast shooting forward. 
they're a little bit less fun to false cast, they're a little bit less forgiving, and they're also less intuitive for a beginner to learn. Most beginners are gonna fall in that category of medium to medium fast action rods. This one here happens to be a medium fast action rod, and it's my favorite rod. So somewhere in that medium fast action range is where most fly rods are gonna fall. Fiberglass rods are a pretty common action for people fishing smaller streams, and they're gonna flex very slow, and during the cast, they're gonna bend all the way down into the butt section of that rod. They're a joy to cast. They make fly casting a lot of fun. But action is important, and I would avoid, if you are a beginner, avoid an ultra-fast action rod. Look for something in that medium-fast action range. Okay, so lastly, we're gonna talk about cost. This is where I'm gonna cut through all the BS for you. You do not need a $1,000 rod to become a proficient fly fisherman or caster. However, I will say that casting a $1,000 rod is a thing of beauty. Don't start with one though. Get into the sport. There are lots of investments you need to make. You need to buy flies, waders, a fly fishing vest or a pack, some hemostats, and oh yeah, there's gas money to get you to the water and back. As you progress in your fishing, do not mock the idea of a $1,000 rod. I hear that all the time and it's a bunch of baloney. You would never tell a musician or somebody who loves to play an instrument that that $1,500 or $2,000 violin or guitar or whatever it is, is overpriced and unnecessary. No, they love to play music, right? And you can hear the difference. The same way with my favorite nine foot five weight right here, that I can feel the difference in that cast. I can feel that vibe. When I throw a cast with a top end premium fly rod, it it seems to defy physics in the way it delivers long, accurate casts and connects me to the fish. So spend what you can. Rods are very competitively priced. You get what you pay for. We have rods all the way from a, a very easy entry point for a beginner all the way on up to you can spend as much as you want. But buy the best rod you can afford with consideration of the fact that there are going to be other investments that you need to make in the sport as well.